Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Coming to you from my high-rise Seattle apartment that I uh, just had the windows done, as you can tell. Looks nice, right? I thought so. Yeah. Uh, Hernandez and uh, Melissa are out in the Pearl Copter bringing you all your uh, – my NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklaces for subscribing and hitting the bell for all the fine programming we've been giving. Thank you very much for that. And as you can see, I have a little bit of an entourage here, and you guys should know who they are by now. I don't know how you don't, but if you don't, this is Steel from Steel Flyers, www.steelflyers.com, one of the finest websites in the land, if not the, uh, and getting better and better all the time. Great, uh, great podcaster, him and... Uh, Ronis do a show there on on Steel Flyers, WWW Steel Flyers. Check it out. Weekly show. It's fantastic. Thanks for coming in, Steel. You got it, man. Thanks for having me, bro. All right. And, of course, Joe Bork. Everybody knows Joe Bork from B-Pal Picks. Uh, that we work together on that as well. That's one of the things we do. We are right now, up until NHL season starts, it's completely free sports picks over there. Yeah. I'll, I'll send the link down in the description it's free like just absolutely free so there you go and he also does uh he's also part of steel flyers aren't you joe Bork? yeah yeah steelflyers.com and then the youtube uh sports fanatic news that these fine gentlemen appear on a uh, on good occasion as well yeah it's fan. so yes we're doing montreal canadians today i should have told you that right off the bat because you guys have a tendency to get a little impatient and leave and you don't know what we're doing we're doing a series on free agency and uh, where teams are going in the off season and all of those sort of things like that. And it's going to be the Montreal Canadiens today. We have done Edmonton. We have done the Perlo alphabet. <laughs> I'm sure it's not completely in alphabetical order, but it's close. We did um, Dallas Stars together. All of us did the Dallas Stars. That's fantastic. So check out the, um, my other videos there to check to, and uh, enjoy that peruse peruse around that environment but today we got a very interesting uh, team in the Montreal Canadiens um, when I was looking at this and a lot of people I also do stuff with Peyton on the radio and John from off the wall hockey and we've discussed Montreal a lot because they made a heck of a lot of moves this year and when I'm asked how do I think they're going to do this year or what they're going to do to tell you the honest truth I haven't even got I'm not even fully sure yet but let's delve into it a little bit. I'm going to start with uh, Steele. Where do you think that Montreal is headed, and how do you like the moves they've made so far? Wow. Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> uh, Montreal played against us, and we, we beat them in the first round, but barely. Okay? They were a tight-checking team. They were... Uh, they had a lot of tenacity, and of course, you can't go wrong when you got, you know, future Hall of Famer Carey Price back there stopping the puck for you. And with going 31 and 31 and 7 last year, and being the last team to make it in the playoffs for the special uh, playoffs that we had this past year, but they came out and whooped up on Pittsburgh. So go Montreal. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, yeah. So. I'll tell you what, they made some really great moves uh, with getting Tyler to Foley and, and getting the uh, Brandon Gallagher um, signing done. Um, their general manager basically uh, came out and said, you know, look, these are the four things that we need to do to make our team better. Um, he seems to feel that they've checked off all those boxes. And with what Montreal seems like they're building, it seems like it could be interesting. I mean, they have a really solid, good core of team. You know what I mean? And they got some really good up-and-comers with Suzuki, who played awesome in the playoffs, and Kokanyemi, who played awesome in the playoffs, mm -hmm. you know, and, and came on as at late there for them. Uh, I mean, they have a good core team. They, they got, you know, Shea Weber back there. They, they got a, a good nucleus of team. They got Carey Price. I think they should be in the mix. I mean, I, I don't know if I can put a, a thumb on, you know, 
calling where they're going to finish or anything like that, but they should be in the mix. I'm looking them. I'm looking for them to be a lot more improved than what they were last year. The only thing that I have a concern about is this based off of exactly what you said. They had a lot of turnover. They had a lot of guys go and a lot of guys come, so to speak. You know what I mean? And with the shortened time frame, the shortened training and all that other stuff, it might take them a little while for this team to gel. You know what I mean? You, that might take them a couple of games because we're not going to have all that training and bonding and all that other time that the team has together to, to get to know each other and stuff like that because they, excuse me, brought in a bunch of guys that, are going to be important cogs to their to their team moving forward. So I think it's going to take a little while for that to get gelled. But I think once they do, man, I think they could definitely be a team to contend with moving forward. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very good point. Uh, this condensed season, even if they do do the eighty two, uh, there's not much practice time going on there. I would think uh, uh, for sure, and bonding time. If there's not going to be an uh, all star game and all-star break and all that kind of stuff like that. That's a very good point. Joe, how about you? I got some, you know, the big Domi trade and, uh, for, for Josh Anderson. And uh, what do you, what do you, yeah. <laughs> we didn't even get into think? that yet. Yeah, yeah we will. Um, that's for sure. What do you think about all these moves that uh, Bergevin has, has done in, uh, in so far this season? I mean, they've all made sense. Whether we play, uh, we heard um, – the limited, the least they'll do is 48, like the 12-13 lockout uh, season uh, yeah. in game total, which would still be condensed because then they would want to get it done before the July Olympics start. So mm-hmm. even if it is that short, it would still be condensed because that would be the way to get it done. You could probably, though, play 60 games, in my opinion, and still get it done before the Olympics, but we're we'll see. I'm sure that's probably another number ballpark they had since when Daly came out and commented on it. He said that there's a couple... Um, plans we have in front of us, but kind of only hinted at like two of them. So, which is like a full season condensed, or the least being 48 is like all they really hinted at so far. And that means when they phrase it as the least, that makes it seem like we don't want to play 48 games. You definitely want to play more than 48 games, but the least we'll go is 48 games. So that's why it's big that they picked up another goal because Montreal's issue was Carey Price isn't getting younger. He Mm. is still one of the best goalies in the league, Mm. and he was voted on by his peers as still the best in the league due to all the circumstances of their team and not having the best overall defense until now, really. They built up their defense. Um, So I think having a guy like Allen who really backed up Bennington well last year and kind of helped him in an off year when he got uh, going um, as his backup is a good backup to have as a 1B behind Price. He's also from that area, so you know he's going to be very comfortable. Um, And he's going to be able to fit in well there and work out well, I think, as a platoon goal we set. And also, after this year, you got him for a good cap hit. He's only at 2.875, where 4.35 is like what his starting contract was. So now he's going to get paid after this season like the backup. Uh, or 1B, you want him to be. And then speaking of young guys, they got, of course, another young guy coming in in uh, Alexander Romanov, who's one of the better young defensemen uh, coming through the pipes up into the league uh, this season, most likely, where uh, they were talking about him for a while. He's 5'11", moves the puck well, very solid on the uh, offensive end. Um, and he's a guy that's just a very good, solid defender, too. He's a great plus-minus guy. Last year in uh, the KHL, he had a plus uh, 21 as a uh, 19, 20-year-old. Um, so uh, he's a player that it's going to be interesting to see uh, what he does uh, when he comes over. He's probably going to do very well because playing that well in the K at that young of an age usually translates pretty well to the NHL. Um, so... I think he'll do well, fit in. He'll probably be in their top six to start the season, quite honestly, when it comes to defense. And then, so you have Weber Petrie, who's one of the most underrated defensemen in the NHL. Joel, Joel Edmondson, who's uh, really solid of a three, four, wherever you put him. Sherratt, who, since he's gone to Montreal, has taken his game to a different level. And then uh, Kulak, they just like and seem to fit him into the lineup well, so I think. They have, like, two guys that do best because of the situation. They're in Kulak, 
their coaching staff and everyone really likes that they put him in great situations. Other teams, he might not play as well as he does because they might not put him in the same situation. Then Sherratt, they just do know how to work big body defensemen that can hit in Montreal. And that's that was a perfect fit going there. That seems to be a good fit for his career. And then they hung on to Mete. But, uh, yeah, the Josh Anderson trade, uh, what you brought up, that's going to be the biggest thing. We know Domi wasn't working out, so they had to get rid of him. Anderson did want to change the scenery, so he's really motivated. Uh, but he's getting paid 5-5, five, five, which is only a mil below Gallagher, which is a very good contract for Gallagher. Uh, for Anderson, a very risky contract. So if he pans out, then you're going to be fine. If he, if it's not even just him, he's motivated, he's a good player, I think would do fine if he stays on the ice. The question is, will he be able to stay healthy? It's not more, can he? Yeah. For me, it's not as much of a question, can he produce at least around a $5.5 million player, if not at it? Yeah, if he could stay on the ice, I would think so. The biggest question is more, is he able to stay on the ice for you consistently? That's why giving him that much tenure for that much value was surprising to me, and that's why it's not surprising that Columbus wanted to get rid of him. Um, So that's why Montreal's a team, since they can't really get over that hump and get all those players they wanted to draw in in recent years for whatever reason, they figure – they want that size and skilled forward. Maybe we have to take a risk to get him since we can't just uh, get all the other guys that we want since people aren't coming here as smoothly and easily as back in the 80s or 90s or early 2000s. <laughs> uh, no, it's not a mad rush to go to Montreal. So Yeah, right. Um, that's why I think they took a risk there and hope it pays off. Uh, you also have a guy, the most interesting player, in my opinion, to watch this year for Montreal, though, is going to be Tatar because they got to decide with their cap space, which is not great. Uh, they're only a 300 some thousand because, like Steele said before the podcast, Kakaniemi and uh, Bach, the defensemen, are in loan right now. That's the only reason they're not over uh, what they're going to do with Tatar, who's on the final year of his contract. So he's going to be the most interesting player to watch, I think, to see how he plays. Because obviously how he plays is going to depend on if they want to keep him or just move him for assets in the final year. And then you also always have to watch what's going on in the Jonathan Drouin uh, rumor mill. So. Yeah, some good points there for sure. Um, the uh, Ron talking, I, I really think that the question mark for me a lot is going to be the chemist- chemistry of this team. There's a lot of – even in a regular uh, – or what, even in a regular what's uh, see like a regular season, when when there's a lot of moves like that, like uh, it's difficult for teams to gel when there's a lot of moves, right? Steel, like yeah. When you're talking now, getting into um, uh, condensed seasons, less practice. This is my main concern with Montreal here. Um, as far as uh, uh, Joe is saying. The uh, I I I think it feels a little bit like um, Bergevin was almost um, stretching here. Yeah. That's what I really want to say. Yeah. Like he was. Do you don't? Do you, does that feel like that to you, Steele? I don't know. I mean, you know, look, he did a really good job with getting everybody taken care of for this year, for the most part. Um, he made the moves that he needed to move that he felt that he needed to make. With bringing in the backup goalie, uh, they went out and got Gallagher. You know what I mean. They were able to get some size and some scoring. You know what I'm saying. And they were able to check off those boxes that he felt that they needed to do. Now, here's going to be the thing: Are we going to be able to see this team put it together? Because they've they got rid of Domi, who was you know not somebody who they didn't feel was fitting into where they wanted him to play, and he didn't feel that he was fitting in. You know what I mean. So moving him uh, was something that was kind of already a foregone conclusion, you know what I mean? And, and I really think 
with how uh, Suzuki picked up his play and and Kaken and Yemi came, picked up their play, especially in the playoffs. I think those guys are going to be um, impact players for this team and and make them something that you're going to have to game plan for moving forward, especially when you put them up there with Gallagher and the rest of the team. I mean, I, I, I really do see this team as being something to contend with. They've got scoring. They've got a Hall of Fame goalie. They've got relatively good defense. They've got good coaching. And now it seems like they've got general manager and team behind them. You know what I mean? So, they it, look, it's either going to be one or the other. You know what I mean? <laughs> either they're going to be really good or it's not going to work out. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Steele, about the one or the other part. I mean, I think this was uh, ca- the calculated. Um, something else that was mentioned that they have, that we, I think it was before we started this, is one thing that Bergevin has done is loaded up on draft picks leading up to this quote, quote, risk. Right? Holy moly. So, yeah, he had they had create a lot of draft picks this year. I think it was like three seconds and a first and two, uh, se- all that. Uh, two yeah. seconds, three fourths, a fifth and a sixth. And the first, of course. Oh, and the first, yeah. yeah, the yeah, first, yeah. Which was uh, Goulet, which was a great, uh, looks like a big yeah. defenseman that'll take a while. And uh, they also, got next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, and next year they also have. I think Steele was mentioned, or Joe, I can't remember, was mentioned that they have... Three thirds, and I think it was three fourths. Let me scroll up real quick. Three fourths and three fifths. So plus the they first. Have one. Plus, plus the, the first. first. So they got to end yeah. the six and seven. So they got yeah, okay. They got um a lot of tricks to move Man. around in next year's draft and for this so, year's trade deadline. Uh, yeah. So they, so he so he kind of it's risky, but also he's backed himself Not up as with much the fact. That there's going to be a lot of youth coming in. So if any of these things don't work out, yeah, you know they've got that. And next I mean, year about Tatar, um, he's a UFA. Also Joel Armia is a UFA. Philip Dano is a UFA. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, pieces there that they're going to have to make year. decisions on next year yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, having those guys on their UFA deals though. You there, you know, um, is quite often guys that are playing for the big contracts. Tatar, especially, is a guy that is fairly consistent, but I don't know, is it added motivation? You're going to be playing for your family now as well, right? Uh, these are these are the, playing for the big contracts seems to bring out big years in players. Do you find that still? Yeah, I mean, think about it if you're trying to get tenure. And you're trying to get bucks. <laughs> you better be, you better be playing all out. You you better be having your A game every single night, especially if you want tenure, because their teams are not handing them out this year, and probably not next year either, mm-hmm. because especially because the cap is not going anywhere. You know what I mean? So that's the other thing too. That's that I think is gonna hopefully like uh, might bode well for them, like with what. You know what uh, Colorado was doing, where they're signing team-friendly deals, right? So all these UFAs that they got for next year, they might be able to get them on some team-friendly deals. You know what I'm saying? Because look, here's what I think is gonna. Here's what I think is gonna start seeing. What I think we're gonna start seeing to happen is because of the cap is gonna be flat for the next couple years. You're gonna see teams that are just gonna do cap friendly deals just for those next couple years and then after that then it's going to be all bets off maybe yeah we'll see maybe you know they'll I mean? learn their lesson and realize that you know we can't we can't throw money around like like a lot of teams have done and put themselves in cap hell and then next thing you know you're in a rebuild because you're overpaying guys that uh screw up your cap so so bad possibly and, maybe and, this will bring that on uh, yeah exactly you know so we'll yeah. see <laughs> we'll see. Like, because- and a good example is Joe was saying he could the Montreal could go in a bit of cap hell if Anderson's injuries do not allow him to be the effective player he once was, right, Joe? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Bergevin, uh, they have to have a plan with how close their cap is in place of trading one other person, whoever that may be, before or we have game one. 
I don't. Th- I think there's going to be one less person we're looking at in the forward core, in the forward core as a paid veteran, uh, by the game one. That's how I think they're going to fix that issue. It's either going to be Drew Ann's going to be traded, which is going to be probably for the most assets you could get out of anybody, uh, or the one they don't want to do if they can't do anybody else. You would have to trade Tatar in the final year of his contract. Or you have, um, of course, Paul Byron, uh, who people think uh, is a guy that they can get rid of and it won't bring any issue. But we saw how he steps up during playoff time and kind of becomes more and more of a staple leader. You have to find that gap in the locker room. It's not always just about on ice play. You have to find the gap of to take that role where you're not going to give it to a Drew Ann who's about, probably going to get traded soon too. Tatar might not be there after next year so. When you trade a buyer and you have to figure out who's going to take over his leadership role, too, because mm-hmm. a lot of guys are questioned how much longer they're going to be there. Mm-hmm. So unless if you just slap it to Trafoli, since you know you have him signed for the next four years and just say, congratulations, you just got here, but you're the assistant captain. Have fun with that. Uh, it might not be the best <laughs> strategy, but uh, th- that's uh, th- there's not much you can do there. I would just make most of your defensemen the A's at that point since they've been around uh, yeah. longer. But um, I think you have to make a move at forward in order to free up your cap more. And I think the one that makes the most sense is probably Drew Ann, because we know if he can stay healthy, we're talking about Josh Anderson staying healthy. If Jonathan Drew Ann actually can stay healthy, he's another yeah. guy that has a lot of skill that if he goes to a team, and I said this multiple times, it's not about one team's doctors being better than the others when it comes to sports and either a pitcher or a goalie or a position player in hockey like someone figuring out how to keep them healthy over someone else. It's just about finding the thing that works. It's just about a different style of thinking for each organization. So they're like, oh, wait, maybe this will work as your regimen so you don't get injured as much. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, okay, cool. Now he's not getting injured as much. Like that happens a lot where it's not really explained in, oh, one doctor's. It's not because one team's medical people are better than the other. It's just because they found some new strategy or something or they just figured it out. And – I think that's why at this point for Drew Ann is probably best for a change of scenery because they're going to be looking at it through a new landscape, um, through for new, sure. fresh eyes yeah. to try to get him into a good regimen for him where the Canadians are kind of at a point where they're like, okay, we tried this, 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 and that. So it's a complete different dynamic. I think a fresh organization for him might do best for him and might do best for Montreal because Bergevin seems like he's a good GM, obviously, as seen from accumulating the draft picks. He has a a couple for the back-end rounds. He has two in the seventh next year, too, and I'm sure accumulate more by the end of this year with how he's been going. Uh, He's good at convincing people to get an extra thing, usually. So if you're trading someone with the skill of Druan, even though he has injuries, you would think Bergevin would be a GM because of his skill, if he can convince them, all you got to do is figure out the medical with a good regimen that'll keep them the most healthy. He might get an extra pick or something out of Drew and he's a type of GM that tends to do that. So uh, he kind of reminds me of a basketball GM because in basketball, you tend to see more GMs trade people and to just keep stacking up picks so they have more picks mm-hmm. because there's only two rounds of the draft. Yeah. So then you can kind of play with the two rounds of the draft more. Where in hockey, there's seven rounds, so it's a little bit less common to have, like, two seconds, three thirds, three fourths, three. Like, that's not really that's not really as common at all in hockey. So it's it shows how good and lethal of a GM this guy can be when put in the right situation because it's not easy to acquire that much picks. Exactly. So, picks Especially the, so quickly. Yeah, because we see picks are the easiest thing to trade for uh, assets, too, because each year you tend to see a fifth-round pick traded for a guy you never thought would be traded for a fifth-round pick, and you're like, wait a minute, it only took a fifth-round pick to trade for that guy? <laughs> yeah, but, right. So all, that's, all yeah. about the cap space. That's, that's why having <laughs> fifth round, yeah, that's why having three fifth-round picks is huge, because exactly. if you end up freeing up some cap space, some guy might be like, oh, here's a $4 million player we can't afford, and then Mark Burns will be like, oh, here's a fifth-round pick, and then it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. For Montreal in the future, acquiring the picks is one thing. Actually hitting on the picks for Montreal has been extremely oh, yeah. The last well, time they hit on a on a first round pick, believe it or not, well, I can't really say that because you can say Kokaniemi now. But before that, 
and Suzuki. But and before Suzuki. that was Pacioretty. Back in like 10 years ago. They, yeah. they, they had a horrible run of drafting. But hopefully that's all turned around here now. Suzuki and Kokaniemi. I... Uh, Steele brought it up, and I think he's exactly right. I think almost all of this hinges on those two kids. What happens with those two kids? If, if Kokaniemi and Suzuki uh, improve to the point where they can be reliable one-two defensemen or centermen this year, then this team can be who knows where they can be. That's what I'm saying. Like this team could be first overall. It could not well, make the playoffs. They played really well in the playoffs too, man. Those two they, guys played they, really well. They really did play well in the playoffs. And you, I also, uh, Steele, you mentioned uh, what good coaching. Claude Julian is one of the greatest coaches ever. He's an unbelievable coach. So there is a lot to like, and there's just a lot of, Joe brought up a lot of question marks as well yeah. that have to be filled in. Uh, Anderson's the biggest question mark. I think everybody knows that. Yeah. Um, how is Edmonton Edmonton going to fit into that D line? I personally think maybe they're they're asking a little much to put him in a top four role. We'll find out. In Carolina, he was beaten out of that top four role there. So if he makes your top four here, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, where is your defense at? But. Then again, in Carolina, they didn't have... have a pretty good defense. Price. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have price, yeah. right? What yeah. I think my favorite part about Montreal this year is finally Price gets to have a team in front of him for a, like he had at one time before, but now he gets to have pro possibly a defense in front of him good enough that the, who knows where he, where he can... He's, he's an X-factor here too, right? That's true. That is entirely true. So far for Kaka Niemi since I looked it up. He's only played four games in the league on loan and hasn't tallied anything through four games. As of yet. Okay. Doesn't really mean all that much. Yeah, he okay. only has played four games so far. I was just going to say, yeah, he's only played four games, and they ha they've they been off since what? <laughs> yeah. They were knocked out after the first round, so they've been, they've been sitting for quite a while. Yeah, it's hard to say. Anyways, gentlemen, Steele, the Professor Joe. Did I mention that you were the professor yet? I don't think I did. If you don't know, he is the professor. We call I him will professor. say, um, though, uh, Bach, the guy that got loaned, he didn't start playing yet, but they are high on him. So, Steele, yeah. that's a guy that's a second-round pick from a couple years ago. Josh yeah. Brook, not Brook. 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 Yeah. Brook. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They're also high on Kale Flurry too. Yeah. He's uh, another guy that's coming up. That Seems like anybody with the last name Flurry in the NHL, everyone's always high on <laughs> seems to do well. Yeah. Well, that's that's our full forty-two, boys and girls. This has been awesome doing Montreal Canadiens with Steele and Joe. Um, I I don't know. The more we do it, the more fun it gets. Just the frolic just keeps on getting more great, and more. Man. And more. I love doing this. This is great, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will say, awesome. I'll just throw it out there. Um, just because sometimes you got to make bold prediction. Uh, and I'll please Canadian fans. You're going to make the playoffs. Where we'll see. You're yeah, that's it. what I, I would say that uh, too. You're you're going to a run. I think you'll be top five, six. Eh, screw it. You'll be top five in the conference. <sighs> okay, I'll go with that. I'll buy into that. Yeah, I'll buy into that. You guys are more confident than I am. I I'm really not. I'm all over the place here. They could be no, first. They could be. Well, I was going to say top six originally. To protect so them. I'll take the middle. Like all right. Let's, okay. I'll say top six then. I'll go top all right. I'll, I'll say top six. You say top five. I'll say top six. I'll say somewhere in the middle and leave it at that because I, <laughs> most, it is, I, it's the most, it's the team I'm most unsure of. I do know. I really would love to see Montreal fans have something to cheer for. I, I've I been to Montreal. They are Very amazing good. fans, yeah. amazing fans, and they deserve That's a good the place team I there. Want to visit too, because it's my mom beautiful. Visited, yeah, my mom's visited it multiple times. Oh, it's a get, yeah. beautiful, beautiful city. It really, really is. So, Steel, tell us all about your fine programming you got going on there, big guy. Well, hey, how about this? Check this out. So we're hoping that real soon we can have the NHL Perla Wisdom page will be going live. And hopefully we can have the uh, True Philadelphia Sports page go live. And hopefully we can have the Joe Borg page go live. So stay tuned for that. Um, so you'll be able to go to their pages and go directly to 
catch all of their content, check out all their latest videos and all that great stuff. Um, also, we got another great announcement for you. Um, we started a new show last week called The Hockey Writers, Inc. We will be interviewing James Hardy this Saturday for The Hockey Writers, Inc. with Lance Green. So check that out. Yes, good big uh, undrafted prospect that's yep. been coming up. Well, Dell, you got uh, they do a lot of that sort of thing on that uh, hockey writers inc. Highly recommend you check it. Lance is a great writer, a great podcaster. Yep. Featured on Bleacher Report, a Reports. great hockey mind. Uh, yep. Bleacher Report, it's on. This is getting bigger Flyers and bigger all gritty. the time. Flyers yep. nitty gritty. Can't forget that. Joe Bass. Can't forget that. Oh my, gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> For sure. If you're a Flyers fan, you got to be checking Gotta that be out. Got to be checking them out. Joe, how about you, buddy? What do you got going on right now? Yeah, uh, Flyers nitty gritty. I did do a Dejanaires article recently if people yeah, want to uh, check one that one. out. And then I did an NHL update one over at Pub Sports on like the whole 48 game and blah, 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 so on and so forth of what's going on in the offseason. Um, but you can find all my information at Steel Flyers and then their Sports Fanatic News YouTube page again. And, of course, uh, JJ Boric, B-O-R-E-K-26, uh, is my uh, Twitter. And, again, Montreal, I think the price will be right for you guys this year. I'll use that old cliche that you guys get annoyed at. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think the price will be right this year. And I think with this defense, he's voted on Best Buy his peers, so why can't Carey Price finish top? Four in the Vezina. I'm not going to say he's going to be nominated by the because top three is nomination, but uh, at least top somewhere in the top four uh, with this type. Of, he he got nominated still as the best goalie by his peers with the defense he had last year. Wow. They added a couple guys to their defense this year yeah. that we think really are going to help. Could I would be. say he'll be mentioned in the Vezina conversation by you. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Nothing will surprise me from that great goaltender. He's unbelievable and. Uh, uh, he's been getting a lot of flack lately, and all the people that have been doing that, you're wrong. Have a great day, everyone. Lots of love to you. Thanks for subscribing. That's our full 42. Okay, bye.